by giving the, the Alistar into the Amumu. So I think on red side, uh, Lao didn't fully utilize what they could have gotten here. Now the question is, will it punish them, of course? Uh, will this be something that comes back to hurt them? Find out how this Viego and Sejuani play out, because I think that's the crux of this in terms of where you wanted to run potential Count is a strong word, but like answers into what is being presented to you. And I do think it is very crucial, it's very fair to be critical of a team that's already lost a game, playing a little uncharacteristic from what we saw from them regionally or domestically. And I want to zoom out and say, how do you expect the early game to play out? Where should we focus our attention? I think early game, you focus on DFM and, and what they have to offer as well, because there's a lot of ways to find gangs. Steel can go into any lane and find kill pressure if he wants to. From the side of Loud, you have team fighting on easy mode. You have Sejuani, you have a Mumu, you have the misfortune. Like you go down in, you know, early season two, back in season three, you ban a Mumu, you ban Malphite, those are the classic bans. This is the kind of composition you're looking for for Loud. So if it didn't work out in the first game, this should be the one where it's not too complicated finding yourself a lead in a team fight, if you're even. <laughs> Shouldn't be too complicated. That is a bold sentence, I think. We will, of course, find out whether or not uh, it is possible here as we load up onto the Rift. DFM making their first game or making their debut on the World Stage in 2022. The exact same roster from MSI. High expectations, I think, for the squad based on the performance we saw from Loud earlier today. They obviously want to try bounce back, and Robo got that very early Sedge one. I think, go for it. I think for DFM as well, it's a bit of a redemption run you're looking for because while you're saying there is a lot of expectations coming through, they didn't have the best track record at MSI, right? They yeah. they came to one the tournament five. and they won in five, as, as you said. So it, it's obviously a rebuilding phase. You, you really have to put into the context that when DFM played in 2021 Worlds, they had the equivalent of Exodia that Japan could really bring to... <laughs> it's true what Japan could really bring to the World Championship. And them reaching main stage was by far the best thing that could happen. Like, if you expected more, you'd be on too much copium. So I think, like, now coming back to finding the correct building blocks, that's really what you're looking for. I really think, I really wish you'd have listened earlier and used a Voltron reference or Megazord instead of Exodia. Yeah, but you Come can't on. really keep it repetitive. You gotta find gotta new stuff. Nah. Give me more stuff nah, to work nah, with. No. You gotta repeat the golden oldies, the classics. All right. Uh, maybe oh. you're just not up to the task, oh, Trevor. Oh, 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 Gobble, Gobble, sassy. I know. Sassy. Will DFM be sassy in this early game? They've started off, uh, got that bottom lane, helping out Steel on the poppy. Got the phase rush in his back pocket. Keystones were highlighted just a moment ago. And Sayosh now making his way down to that bottom lane, keeping an eye on Croc. He's starting in the right eastern quadrant on that blue buff secured. So no real surprises, and Rover already jumping forward. And uh, we do have a very brief pause. How do you know it's brief? Ah, uh, touche. Uh, we have a pause briefly after starting the game. Oh, there you go. That's a much well, maybe you just knew something I didn't. It. No, no, that is 100% the right call, my friend. 100%. It's, just, oh, uh, it's the one and only. If we do... Wait, hang on. Have we had... Yeah, we have had a game pause already. We right? did. Yes, yes, we did. Yes, yes. We're collecting them at this point. <laughs> How many different kind of pause can we have? <laughs> this is... Wait, actually, no. We're getting out that, in a chrono why, break. I'm just going to shut up. Why do you have to... Sit? Don't tempt fate. Touch wood. Okay, there you go. Touch wood? A little bit of like... It's an English saying. I don't know why. I mean, it's a sign of good luck. I don't know the origin of it, though. So I'd have to look it up. Um, All right, yeah. Well, I'm curious to that one. Okay, let's Google this. We, I, we might have time. Yeah, what definitely. is the origin of such word? Uh, obviously, we do have a gameplay pause. Uh, if you're getting info, I will let you know. No one knows when or how the practice of knocking on wood began. The British have used this phrase. It's knocking on wood, not yeah. touch wood. Yeah, no, I mean, touch touching wood uh, is a ritual of superstition for either bringing good luck or warding off bad luck. Oh, wow. Um, despite the... Da -da -da, there is an origin that it's linked to the wooden cross, but yeah, no, no origin. So it's just, yeah, somebody made it up and it stuck. Yeah, there you yeah. go. <laughs> I mean, that's how all language works, to be fair. Definitely. All language is made up and it just stuck. I mean, we, we just knock under the table for like good luck you know, in my culture. <laughs> You're going to give me all of that drama for you to just say the Danish people knock on the bottom of a table. Yeah. And like, how is that different to what I just said? Actually, that'll be interesting. How do... Um, are all tables made of wood? Oh, uh, good point. Yeah, yeah touche. Okay. There I, you go. I get you. I get you. I've said that a couple of times. There you go. Oh, unfortunately. Um, thank you again for sticking with us. We know it's been rough. Uh, it has been a, a tough day for everybody. I trust that uh, we will obviously look into these things. And <laughs> I've been here since game two out. as well. I, I mean, it's been a long day. It has been. You, you got the tricast to open the day, and we're going to have four on the back end. 
Luckily, um, you've got a day off tomorrow. I'll be hosting the Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll be. But honestly, the real MVPs are the people that actually decided to just stick around and watch all of this. The thing that I'm like, the most, honestly, giga chats. The thing that I'm most excited for when we look at tomorrow's games, when is our next EU versus NA? Uh, we're not going to have one tomorrow. As I take a look through here, I'm well, the, the, there's only one NA team in the group. And that it's that single round it. robin. Thank, thank you, thank you. See, you're good with math. I forgot, right? So maybe in playoffs. So uh, actually, I should have just let you look because you only reason, got to two columns. I could have just let you look the for reason, ages. The reason I'm wondering is after um, defacing the uh, bird from earlier. Yeah. I want to see whether or not any of our LCS colleagues will defense. Oh, because maybe what they could do is they could, they could make a Canadian draw on it, right? I'm saying it right now. If they're not bringing JoJo to New York, yeah. I will riot. And I will, get, like, I will get Twitter to rally as well to bring JoJo the Eagle to New York. They, what I want, in, I've already decided this, I want to see JoJo next to the World Trophy at the <laughs> opening ceremony of the finals. Rise up! <laughs> I just want to see Mark Z traveling with it. Yeah, like, I want to vlog with it. So Obviously, me and JoJo's out to explore. And, oh, well, we are back in game. We're back in game. Obviously, we are having a bit of fun. We're not 100% certain how long those pauses are. Um, we don't intend it to be disrespectful to DFM or Loud, but to make sure that we don't, you know, overdo all of the stories, we'll have a little bit of fun with it. So we're back onto the Rift. Um, I was trying to draw some attention here to Steel and to Croc in terms of some of their pathing and where they could play as once again, a little bit of engage on this bottom lane. Croc will find that bandage toss and the double up is going to chunk you to pawn backwards. So I think somewhat to be expected in the early game engage once you get that CC down. Yeah, what I think is really curious is the fact that both junglers has identified that they want to be pathing on towards the top side in the early game. You can actually even see it on the pinks right now. Croc is skipping his own red buff and he's moving into the blue buff off steel instead. In terms of lane priority right now, Robo is pushing in. No ward is available for Croc. This could actually get dicey if moves are coming through, but it's... Looking okay so far. Jin, not gonna spot out. Steel will step forward. Smite fight is available here. Steel now being bullied. Tinones has made his move forward as well. Nyarong is gonna step backwards. So Croc will steal that blue buff away. Reset the timer on the one he's already secured and put this poppy from DFM behind. I really liked how Tenones was able to push that wave and step in to at least potentially back up Croc if anything played out. How good is this game, Sam? Does he know that you would just pop Sweeper afterwards? He's not been spotted off yet. That's why Steel activated the Sweeper. Oh, oh baited the, by the Observers. The was so good. That was exceptional from the Observers. But I also think it does show, you know, what options could have been available oh, to yeah. Croc. Um, and then as he backed away, you know, it's one of those things where it could have been amazing. Didn't work out that time around. Now look at Robo though, because he does not have Flash on the Sejuani and Steel rides around the corner. Oh, that Steadfast Presence is huge! So well played. Both junglers were looking at path top. Steel was denied his blue buff, and he denies Loud first blood. And also a bit disrespectful from Robo. You can see his trinket actually came off. If he waited around a little longer, he could have gotten that ward down. And also just by the process of elimination, Steel could only be top at that point. Yeah. I mean, uh, Rob. Robo, Rob's day, not going to a great start for him. In the first game, conceding first blood. I think some kudos there to Steel. Um, he managed to secure the kill. Gonna have that recall instant teleport back for Aatrox and Ebi in the top lane. And every time we look at this bottom lane pushed in, so all three lanes pushed a little bit by Loud, and it was Robo that was punished. Yeah, and you can see, I think Robo wanted to come down. He wanted to yeah. set up up, but just never got the chance because of the pressure from Ebi. And then knowing that there's no mobility available or that he's just not going to react in time to the Flash Q coming through, Ebi sets his up beautifully with Steel coming around to just ground him down. And no Flash for him either. Teleport Ignite for that Sage Wani top. Ultimately getting punished for that. Yudapont and Harp this time around at a very minor CS advantage. Push this wave out. Seos has uh, recalled going to start to roam back down to rejoin his bot laner. And I think the Loud, um, they've got to be a little bit careful. We have seen Aatrox is today already running away with the game. But also, once these uh, champions hit level 6, the engage power is absolutely fantastic. And if Croc is able to steal away Aatrox or even that Aphelios Assault also can be hugely impactful. Oh yeah, definitely with the Aatrox there. Like, just moving forward, you don't really need the ultimate, like, but just being able to have that extra CC in your kit after finding a kill, that's going to be huge. But we, you're waiting for it. From the side of Loud, you're building up. Slowly but surely, yeah. you're waiting the anticipation. You're not really looking to make all the plays just yet, but once you start hitting level 6 and new champions, that's where you start getting action. But the same can be said for Yaharong in the mid lane. You're level 6 on the Talia now. 
once you start picking up a lost chapter, once you have full points in your queue, that's where you start to shove in the lanes. But for now, it's actually Lao making the first move. Again, managing to get the damage on the Unipom. Bandage toss on to Harp. Continue to hammer. I mean, Branch is just destroying. Like, completely untouched that fight because DFM are running for their lives. And I'm just so curious as well, because finding counters to the misfortune in terms of the AD carry position is actually going to be a little bit difficult. You want something that can challenge you like the Tristana with mobility, but if you're just there shaking, handshaking with auto attacks or standing behind minions when Qmax is the thing now, you are just not going to be winning out on the trades. And now with finally having that bot lane, priority forcing Utapon and Half to go for the reset, now is just going to be starting off the first objective with the neutral Drake here. And this is 6 minutes and 30 seconds into the game. This is a brilliant time to pick up this first one. I'm starting to get nervous for DFM already because much like our previous game, Chiefs, um, DFM's early game and getting leads in the early game is kind of how they've picked up their wins, right? And um, now, Kulborg, how would you put it in terms of their decision-making late game for DFM? Uh, because they're already starting to be Hold pressured it. and pushed around. Hold the it. Travel bubble. And Ebi will be conceding the one next kill here. Now pick that one up, Robo gets it. Yeah, there you have it. They might even continue the skirmishing. The thing you have to realize is that they're just very early setting off for the Herald skirmishing, yeah. if that's what they're looking for. One minute and it will be spawning. So looking to continue with that neutral objective stacking. But to go back to what you did say, Trevor, I think Detonation focused me when they sometimes have gotten a lead. It's one of the teams that feels a bit pressured to make a play. They have a they're very slow average game time. It's because they're not too quick at closing out their games. Well, this time around, Unipon and Hop, they start the fight. They ultimately lose the fight. The return damage from Make It Rain. And Brunch stepping back with that double up. is meaning Hop and Unipon continue to be bullied just a little. They're not conceding CS, it must be said. Both bot lane is sitting on the same, respectively equal, both middle and top. But again, seeing a lot of trading, and Croc and Steel haven't yet gotten involved for that secondary sort of third game. It's one of the things where DFM spot lane here really wants to contest hard and making sure they get the reset first. Getting resets first as a bot lane just means you get the first move, which means you often get to be the one starting off the Herald. The main problem DFM is finding themselves in right here is that they're now on reset. That means that there's a window now that Loud can look. And as you can see right now, Tenno's push at the mid lane, Croc around as well. Level 8 for Tenno's here. And they're going to start off this Rift Herald, as you mentioned. Steel is pushing up. Yarong will be able to catch that wave. Robo is keeping Ebi busy, but look at the supports. So a lot of potential members gathering around the Rift Herald. It's down to 4,500 HP. Sheyosh will be into the river a little bit later as the Sleepy Trouble Bubble from Tenones will delay Yarong. It's basically a 1v1v1v1v1 as now the players are starting to converge. It's loud that have gathered enough members and pushed DFM away. I mean, it's literally all 10 players in the top half of the map. Yeah, you can see they're still looking as well. And this is the power of the Zoe and these choke holes as well from Tinones. Just continuing to land these bubbles. And with no cleanse available, all DFM can look for is a poppy ultimate and see if they can get the steal. Oh man, now all of a sudden, Steel and Ebi, do they get jumped on? The Rift Herald is still alive. It managed to reset, got back up to full now. Reset down to two and a half thousand. Harp looking for the engage level five. Battle Star goes out. Oh, Sleepy, great old. trouble, bubble. Catches onto Unipon. He cannot do a thing. The Herald is, however, secured on the side of DFM. Now Unipon's running away for his life. Getting caught by Make It Rain. Has fired at the Moonlight Vigil. Gets caught by the auto. Double up, waiting for the cooldown. Sleepy Trouble Bubbles dashed away from but the flash forward from Brunch. Gets himself the kill. The re-engage from Steel will not be able to find anything. The bandage toss from Sheosh. Forced to flash for his life. Now all of a sudden, Tino gets himself one. Everybody's in the jungle. And Ebi has got one looking for more. The Pelstar takes him out. Nine kills at nine minutes. And what an overreach for DFM. They get the Herald. They want to disengage, but they want more. And immediately, loud they punish. Ten owns on this Zoe. Isn't it just a fun champion seeing how it all went down? Let's have a look at the replay once again, because it starts out with a great zoning ultimate from Brands as well. Big credit though to Steel who manages to steal the Rift Held. And this is where you just want to bail out. There's still so many tools for Lao to continue the fight. But I think as we move forward, 
this is where it's messed up. Yaharong stays around for too long to look for a play. You don't do damage on the Talia just yet. And Steel wants to follow up with it, but this is where Tino's punishes. He comes in, he steals the flash, he still has to stopwatch. And great teamwork from Loud, who actually manages to bounce back in a teamfight setting. Something that really lost the game against La Beyond earlier has now won them a fight here against Detonation. Look Focus me. at this energy. Good book. It's Worlds, baby! Oh, it had to I be there. Loved that team fight, and I would like to highlight the Kraken Slayer at 10 minutes and 55 seconds for Brunch. 2 1 and 3. Tenos is 3 0 and 2 on that Zoe, and he picked the Zoe into the Talia. So definitely doing what you want to see. And I think it is crucial because we were talking a little bit about the approach to draft on red side. And I think for at least these first fights, now they're going to be pretty, pretty happy. Yeah, they are definitely happy about this one. Remember, they're the team that stacked up and Drake early as well, which means that just in 10 seconds, we're going to have that next objective available. Robo does have that teleport. So does Ebi if they want to fight. They are not unleashed yet, so if they would want to join, they'd have to do it on a turret. Oh, man. Right now, Tenones is under a little bit of pressure. And all of a sudden, Steel is going to use that hair flex over, Hex Flash over the wall. Steel's holding on. Not going to be able to find any CC to connect, and Ten Zones was forced to flash away to safety just to respect the engage. And just look at Steel. He looked at them, yeah. and he had to flash. Yep. The gaze of that man. It's about sending a message, you know? It's about war. It's about forcing that flash and just make him go away. It's not going to make them go away from the objective nonetheless. It's still very much priority in the favor of Loud. And once again, it's the same story as earlier. Bot lane is pushed in. Branch joins the fight. And just speaking about Branch as well, this was a guy that was stopped in mid-split. He's 18 years old. Rob's Day. Rob's Day. Rob's Day. Rob's Day. Vamos Loud! Hashtag Rob's Day. 2, 1, and 3. It's okay. For me and all the confused reviewers out there, what is Rob's Day? Rob put a tweet out. Robo put a tweet out saying that for all Brazilian fans, get behind him. He had a, like pretty much every Brazilian flag possible on glasses, hat, scarf. And he decided it's Rob's Day. And CBLOL just got behind him, and so did I. That's it. It's that simple. It is Rob's Day indeed. And it might even be Loud's Day if they can equalize the day with the score yeah. as well. But they're not going to be looking for a dive just yet. But they are maintaining control. I give you this it was Loud's evening. Because daytime did not go their way. It's been a long time since that game. I mean, if we go on like this, it might be the nighttime as well. <laughs> That's the case. Right now, Loud, two dragons up, four kills up. There's only a thousand gold. I think it is crucial to keep that in mind. Because Robo this time is going to look to re engage. Winter's Wrath forward gets the stun up, but caught out by the Dark in Blade. Turns to re engage. There's minions doing a lot of work, and Robo is feeling the Sid one. He's got the level advantage, he's got that Barmy Cinder. And looking to keep Ebi busy. There's no support coming from anywhere else. Yeah, and crucially as well, he hasn't been back yet after that. He's still staying around here. He still has that teleport. He still has the possibility to just clear up the minion wave, hit up that recall, and then come back with the items. And you know what? That's exactly what he's going to be doing. Of course, the next objective to fight for will be the Rift Hell as well. There's possibilities for Lao to move their bot lane off towards the top side if that's what they're looking for. It's still 1 minute and 30 yeah. seconds, so there's loads of times in terms of where you want to apply that pressure. But you can clearly already see it with the map move now. Support, moving up, looking to take charge. I mean, the itemization, at least for the last couple of moments, there was a couple of mythics in the side of Loud. It has literally just been balanced out by DFM. And for Loud, they were able to get those combat stats down early. Keep in mind, Croc Ooh. has got himself that Blade of the Rune King. Looking into that Frozen Fist as the pedal still won't find its target. Yeah, Harong steps what he's flashed for that. That's a great seismic shot backwards. Locked in place by the Steadfast Prison, but there's not enough damage just yet. Yeah, Harong is throwing out rock off the rock off the rock, but it's still that goes down first. Flash away from the Croc. Gets the hurt, blows cone, and Croc escapes thanks to that Heartbreaker. It was a little messy from both Ooh. sides, but in the end, loud, there's still the team coming out on top, and we're still 40 seconds on the Rift Herald. There's still loads of time for you to come back, reset, and set it up. And even bigger. Brand still being down towards that bottom side of the map. Now it's just a race. Who can pick up the first turret? Is it going to be a DFM in the mid lane or is it Brands in the bot side? It feels like it's going to be, although Robo's going to try to dissuade the slight amount of CC. Allows Loud to get that first turret blood secured. They hold on for a little while longer before that mid lane tower dies. And for Loud now, they've extended that gold lead further. It's two minutes until the third dragon. That's a 17 minute Drake 3. This tin owns paddle star will get caught by the minions. That's, yeah. uh, that'll make Ebi pretty happy because that was a lot of damage. But if you secure the Rift Hell now as well, you put yourself in a great position. This is a Rift Hell you can use to utilize either a gold lead and a side lane or 
Uh, Srogo finds himself in the mid lane as well. He might be getting caught. Nope, he's out of there. Or just to have it as pressure in the mid lane as well when that third Drake finally comes up. Ooh. Loud now setting themselves up for yet another fight. The Herald is once again available. Both teams. Um, are you a little bit surprised at both teams' willingness to fight for these objectives? Because it has felt, other than the Dragons, everything else has been contested and challenged. This is the Loud I know and have heard so much about from their own region. They are looking to take charge. They're not afraid to fight around their objectives. One of the things I really liked about this team was their lack of hesitation. It's a double-edged sword. Sometimes it really bites them in the back. But when they're in their form and when they're finding a lead and they just keep the pace going, that's why they're super difficult to play against. And as you can see, while DFM is around the same side of the map, there's no way they can match it, and they're not getting anything else uh, elsewhere on the map either. I mean, uh, for Loud, the uh, players of Robo and Tino is currently shining. Obviously, Branch doing a lot as well, but I just want to highlight the fact that this team winning their split here in summer, both Robo and Tino came from opposition, came from Pain Gaming as a duo, and they're now stepping up and carrying this. The reason I, I want to talk about them a little bit, that's Sejuani Pick and Zoe from Phase 1 have been sort of the difference makers in the engages we've seen this far. We're 30 seconds until the next uh, Dragon spawns. So we have to imagine they're going to be willing to fight, but Yaharong on this first pick, Talia's got a lot of damage out. Not going to be enough to take down what is a very tonky Sejuan. You may have a lead, but you can't disrespect them. There's still ways they can come back into this game. But yeah, I agree. I feel like Tanon's really had uh, some misplay going into the second game. Now, Ebi. Still looking to take charge of the enemy's blue side jungle. The deeper vision they can have for this objective, the better setup for when the Drake finally spawns. But teleport. As you said, teleport. 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 Not going to find a target just yet. Glacial Prison. Glacial Prison. Come on, Robo. Find your target. DFM, what's your answer? How do you stop this down? Weaver's wall can work, and this is great from Utapon. He's pushing the mid lane. Robo's going to court out. The Umpel Chains won't pull him backwards, and Branch is stepping forward, looking for a target to pull it. Time down. Croc is going to heartbreak away. The Poppy going to have that steadfast presence, and Ebi gets stunned oh. up, locked up, taken down. Loud get another kill. They will get themselves another dragon. And DFM, they just want to make that play so bad. But Loud, they're just in a way better position, and huge props to Robo once again, finding steel. The rest of Loud immediately collapsing. Oh, so well played here, Loud. They are still only 2,000 gold up, but crucially, the game accelerator, the way to really look to finish cleanly, finish fast, is to look for that soul, look for that elder. And right now, three dragons at 18 minutes. Loud have got themselves set up for, let's, let's call it theoretically, one more dragon fight, get that soul, and that's really how you can see them winning this game. Most definitely, and let's just have a look at the replay once again. Oh, it's actually Tin Owens who find the bubble, and then it's just a no-brainer for Robo afterwards to find it with three other ultimates combined on top of it. And he does so much damage, you can see why they're really looking for it, why he's flashing forward, but even if he gets it, his own team is just not in a position to really follow up afterwards. Can I give you a quick stat you're gonna love? Oh, you're go really for it. gonna love this one. How fight. do you know I'm gonna love them? I know this for a fact. Okay, okay, go on. Do you know that Loud have been involved in both of the fastest first dragons of the day? Ask me how. How? In their game against BYG, dragon number one was secured at six minutes and 35 seconds by Beyond Gaming. Ah. In this game, it was picked up by Loud in six minutes and 35 seconds to the second. They've been involved in both games with the fastest first dragon. Improvise, adapt, overcome. That was the adaptation. They're trying to overcome what they had done earlier in the game. And now, Tinoz oh, might be getting so caught. So good. Tinoz is going to be able to escape for now. That Sleepy Trouble bubbled it so much. And oh, here's the rest Has it bought enough time? Loud, arrive! The Glacial Prison splashed away from it. Will lock Steel under the turret. He starts spinning the Poppy Copter and will send Branch away. Third re-engage is fantastic for Detonation. Focus me, but Evie gets focused down himself. Robo looks for another stun. We'll find the Permafrost and lock down the kill for Croc, who's stolen away the shoves, the pebbles, the rocks. Manages to hot break one. Once more, Woo! it's a double for Tinones. Four more kills for Loud, and they are running away with this game. Only one traded back for DFM and Asher set. They are most certainly running away with it. 20 minutes into the game, they're lacking their jungler. But how bold are they feeling? How much are they feeling themselves? Purple Worm has been starting up. Purple Worm has been started quickest. This may be the fastest Baron of the day. I'm fairly confident on that. I will wait for it to be secured and ask for stats to validate it. So loud on the day, 
We'll have the fastest Baron. Oh, they're waiting for their member. We'll have conceded the fastest dragon, and we'll have secured the fastest dragon. Can I get a stats confirmation on that, and can we make Dash ask the analyst desk about it? Because quick stats are also his passion. He knows it. Break down this fight for me, good boy. Yeah, and I mean, it's... <laughs> I was not ready for that transition, by the way. I thought initially this was the fight that was going to work in the favor of DFM. But the... Uh, once again, just the willingness to pull the trigger from Croc to just flash over the wall to set it all up. I legitimately thought this would going to be another pentacle had half not find the polarize in towards the turret. But even then, Tin owns with that set flash as well, immediately alls forward, finds it, and pedal start for a double kill. Just great stuff from the side of resilience. And let's have a look now as they're still looking for fight. Oh, what? Where did Hop go? Literally, where did he go? I didn't see the, I didn't see the damage at all 1.4k damage from branch and mf if we do get a replay that has to go slow mo because my old man eyes did not see it rebel baron power play activated two minutes left to go surely inhibitors not. being focused down we may be on track for the fastest game of the day as well oh, most definitely and even if you're not they're just pushing in the middle lane or bottom inhibitor and then still tin owns in the mid lane shoving in a wave as well they can just keep the rotations going Ten but they're actually going to push them out here just from their own base very greedy path to take but there's no way for the fm to punish them right now dun 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 the engage comes up from steel not going to be able to do a lot more ebby has just spawned this second no teleport available Inhibitor secure in the bottom lane. Yeah, most definitely. But it also just feels like now they're just waiting for the pressure to come through. They're looking to find a wrath point of attack. They're not really looking to commit to anything too much, I say, as an engage comes through. Does indeed the bullet time's flying across Harp. Steel is the next target. Chunk down. Heavy forced to run for his life. Robo goes over the wall, but doesn't find the target just yet. Unipon will just about go down as Croc will heartbreak his way forward. Another tower falls. The inhibitor's being focused as well. We are on track for the fastest game of Worlds 2020. Yeah, two members down, three members actually with Epi as well. Minion Wave coming in here as well, and they can definitely look for it. Ultimate comes through, but Cannon Minion is still there, and Sleep, but no one's enough okay. to actually punish it. Good book, good book. What? Improvise, what? What? adapt, overcome. Earlier today, Loud lost to Beyond, and that was the fastest win of the day. Right now, Loud want to reclaim that. Oh, Nexus turret number one is being focused. That's the Bud Light Ace underneath the Nexus turrets, underneath the Nexus, and the fastest win of play-ins day one. Loud, take down the FM. Loud strike back, and I really thought that they were just going to try and set up for the Dragon, keep the FM pressured in their own base, but the FM had enough. They look for a fight, and that fine allowed Loud to silence Detonation Focus me. Oh, my word, what a game. Everybody at home, I got very excited. I got a bit carried away with that one, but my word, did I have fun. So, in two games today, Loud are now one and one. They have conceded the fastest dragon of Playance. They have secured the fastest dragon of Playance. They originally conceded the fastest loss of Playance, and now they just set the fastest win. But when I was talking to some of the uh, oh. English casters as well of CB LOL, this was the team that was described to me. The team that, you know, they're not afraid. They want to put themselves forward. This they want to find the team attack. we saw earlier against Beyond. Exactly. I thought that against the Beyond earlier, they would actually be way more aggressive, but they just really didn't found their way on the stage just yet. But this, this is the team that won CB Law. Uh, definitely fantastic.